Hi, welcome to my new build series where I'm going to be filming the building of this Trainer 60 which was done by the Great Plains Manufacturing Company in the US. Now this Trainer 60, we'll have a close look at the plans in a second, has a 65 inch wingspan or 1.8 meters and it's a very basic trainer design it's easy to construct nothing fancy about it uh, no fancy windows or cowl and yet it should be really really good to fly it's got a good pedigree coming from great planes so i think it should be quite a nice aerobatic plane now why do i want to build a trainer what's what's the benefits well a lot of people have been asking me recently what a good first plane is to build from plans and what I would recommend. And I think this would be ideal. If you haven't built from plans before, then it's nice and simple. It'll allow you to get into building from plans, reading and understanding. And there's lots of useful information on these, which we'll have a look at in a minute. I think. From my point of view, there are, there are perhaps two other things which I find make me want to build this. It's a very simple design, and yet, as I said, it should fly lovely. I want something that I can take out in the winter when the ground's a little bit muddy, the grass is a little bit longer, a little bit wetter, and I don't mind it sort of bumping over those those divots and, and, and long grass and getting mud on the underside. And it's got nice big wheels so it will cope with the winter weather. Lovely. So that's kind of the main thing really, or, or one of the main things. Something that's a little bit more robust and a little bit more basic for those winter months. But also a really, really important thing is the engine up the front. Now, for me, the engines that I run in my planes are as important as the planes themselves. Yes, I absolutely love building, I love working with balsa, but I really, really like glow engines. And I love the older, the more vintage engines. And I run some of, I've run some of my engines in test stands, but what I want to build is a flying test stand. So my, my idea is that Around the nose here is going to be quite easy to change in and out engines. So I want to build this to run some of my lovely old engines that I've never had in a plane and would probably never had in a plane. So this is my flying test stand. And I've got some lovely old engines like this Meteor 60, English made Meteor 60, which I think if I remember is from 1976, 77. Um, around that time, I, I can't remember exactly without checking, and I've never run that in a plane. I've also got this Merco 61, which is from the 60s, and this is the, it's a Mark III with the twin plug design. Again, I've never had this in a plane, but I really, really want to hear this and see this pulling a plane around the skies. And after this one, in, in the, I think it's the late 60s, we have the Mark IV Merco 61. Again, I've never had this in a plane, just a single plug, but it'd be great to see. And I've got, I've got boxes of old planes, uh, plane engines, that would just be lovely to have in a couple of months in this, fly it around, change it for another engine, and then another engine, and just to hear the sound of these. Now I think first off I'm going to set this up to run on this Mark IV Merco 61. I've had this running in a test stand, runs lovely. So I think that will probably be the first engine. So basically I want something that I can take out in the winter and I can run these lovely old engines and this foots the bill. So anyway, let's have a close look at the plans and see what's good about them and what we perhaps modify a little bit. Okay, well, as I said, lovely clear plans. We've got a very simple wing construction. It's not tapered. All the ribs are the same size. A little bit of sheeting on the leading edge here and a very narrow section on the, uh, on the trailing edge. 
Now we've only got the right hand side of the wing but that isn't a problem. It won't present a problem when we come to build it and when we get to it I'll point that out why and how we can build the left hand wing when we haven't got a plan to build on. It's not a problem like I said. We've also got a profile here for the symmetrical wing ribs that we need to produce and there's another one here and these are showing two different methods for attaching the wing on top of the fuselage. We can either put dowels through the fuselage and use elastic bands or here we've got screws that come down front and back to hold the wing down. Now I'm going to be using a combination of this. I'm going to be screwing it down at the back but at the front here I'm going to be making a locking mechanism like I've done on previous builds to hold the front of the wing in place. I just think that's a lot more cleaner and, uh, and well I was going to say secure but actually it's probably no more secure. It's just a method I like doing. Now these plans show a single central servo for the aileron control. You can see it again here in the uh, in, in the plan view, in the sorry the side elevation of the plans. Now I'm going to put two independent servos into the wings. I think that's far better and you have a lot more control. They will probably go somewhere around here quite close in to the central join of the wing but I don't want to choose that location just now because I want to see where the wheels are going to fall because I don't want the wheels spinning, throwing up muck and hitting the servos so I want a, a gap between the servos and the wheels to keep them nice and clean. Well the tail plane is a very simple design it's just a slab of balsa or two slabs of balsa shaped into the tail plane and similarly with the elevators which are joined by a piece of music wire. Now I'm going to modify this because every time I look at this plan as good as it is it just screams out to me to be lightened and this is 3 8 balsa. Now at the same time as I'm building this I'm also making an Avanti patterns plane and this is the tail plane that I've just made and it's a similar kind of size I haven't profiled it yet or anything, but that's a similar kind of size. And yet this is hollow. It's got a frame around the outside, diagonals to strengthen it, and 1 16th balsa shoot. And I reckon if I make this tail plane in the same way that I've made this Avanti Patterns plane tail, I can save 50 grams of weight. And actually that's quite a large saving. I mean this plane we're talking about a build weight of uh, six and a half to eight pounds or 2.9 to 3.6 kilos and I would like to get this on the light side so I ran 50, 50 grams we can save in the tail there but there is a downside or not a, well there's something that we need to consider in that making this tail lighter we may end up having it nose heavy because we may need this weight in the design to actually balance it out and to get the CG correct. So what I'm suggesting that we do is we make sure that the, the uh, electronics, the control gear and the battery, we make sure that we can move that back as close to the tail as possible uh, in the event that the tail is too light for the suggested locations for the control gear. So at the moment we'll have a look at this now. You see at the moment they're suggesting the battery up front here but if we've taken 50 grams out of the tail it may be that we need to move the battery back here to compensate for that lighter tail. The last thing we want to do when we're making our planes is add any weight whether that's down the tail or up in the nose. So, but when we've got the main bulk of the plane built, we will mock it up, we'll get it all together with the exception of the radio gear and the battery, and we'll see where the natural CG is starting to fall and what we need to do to get that CG on the specified uh, location here. 
and if we have to move the battery right back then hopefully we have left space to do that. It's quite a big fuse that I said it shouldn't be a problem. Now the actual fuselage sides themselves are solid uh, one, uh, sorry, 316 balsa sheets and I'll just adjust the camera and we'll have a look at the fuselage as a whole. As I said the fuselage sides are made out of uh, 316 balsa and it shows the sides coming from here right up in the nose as one piece of balsa to a join and then all the way down here to the, the point where the elevators meet. Now, I don't have a piece of balsa that long. My balsa sheets are 915 mil and this would need to be nearly a one meter length of balsa. So I need to join that balsa somewhere differently because here it shows the join. So from there to the tail, I don't have enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a join here, a diagonal join and so I've got a solid piece coming down from the tail to a join and then I will have another piece coming all the way up to the nose here. Now for some reason they've shown these pieces here, the, uh, the nose blocks as they've called them, are actually separate pieces that are glued on and held on with just a little piece of triangular stock. Well I'm going to run this side, you can see the, the join there that we're doing away with, I'm going to run this side through, right through to the tip there. And then I'm going to put in a second piece just to thicken it up and, and to double that. We've got a doubler on the inside here, I'm going to put that in. And rather than making it full size, I'm probably going to leave a central section out just to lighten it and see if we can get away with losing a little bit more weight. Now on this central section of the fuselage here where we're going to have the join of the, the balsa wood sheet sides, I'm going to put in a strengthening piece here. So a little bit of a doubler. So that is going to add a little bit of weight to the fuselage but it won't be a great deal. It's going to be over this point of the CG more or less so it shouldn't alter that hopefully. Uh, and to be honest I think at this point where the wheels are, it won't hurt to have a little bit more strength here to, uh, to counteract those bumpy landings perhaps. So I don't think by moving this join from here to here, uh, I don't think that is going to create any weakness. Yes, it's going to add a little bit of weight, but to be honest, we can lighten this doubler that I think they probably only put in because they were envisaging a join here, which we're doing away with. But we will put a bit of a doubler there because a bit of added strength there will be a bonus. Now hopefully you can see what a great set of plans this is and the potential it has to be not only an easy build, a nice build, but a great flyer at the end of it. One thing I haven't touched on is the covering. And I'm thinking perhaps I might go a little bit old school and, uh, and, and get some nylon and dope or something similar to that. But we'll, we'll see how that develops. But I downloaded these plans from the Outer Zone website. And that is a fantastic resource for us model makers. Thousands and thousands of plans that we can download at the touch of a button and print out when we want. Now if you look in the description below, there will be a link to these plans on the Outer Zone website. Well, I'm going to draw this video to a close now, and thanks very much for watching, and please come back and see how we get on with the build. In the next video, I'm going to be looking at creating the fuselage sides and some of the other components that we need to start the build.